Having a basic understanding about the orders of magnitude of global statistics is extremely useful because it allows you to respond to, to correct, and also to bust some of the myths that are persistently around with regard to globalization and global human development. For example, imagine somebody comes around and says, let's end poverty, global poverty, by tomorrow. Yes, right, people would say, right? It sounds like a completely naive and romantic U2 song from the 80s, or kind of like a hippie slogan from the 70s. Let's end global poverty by tomorrow. Is it possible to end global poverty by tomorrow? Do we have the money? Well, I will show you in just a few minutes that it's technically absolutely possible that we do have the money to end global poverty by tomorrow if we would want to. So let's get started with that. First question, how many people are there in the world? Well, let's take 2015 as the reference point. You're cordially invited to repeat the same back of the envelope calculation uh, for subsequent years. And really all, all you need for that is fourth grade, fifth grade math. So it's really not sophisticated. So uh, let's have a look. So in 2015, there were about 7 billion people in the world. And the World Bank tells us that 20% of them live with under $1.25 per day, which the World Bank defines as living in extreme poverty. So 7 billion people, 20% of them, that's 1.4 billion people. Then another 20% live between $1.25 and $2 per day. So that's another 1.4 billion. Now, if we would give one additional dollar to each of them, that would live, lift the people who live in extreme poverty, out of extreme poverty to the border of, of poverty, so out of poverty, and it live, would lift the people who live in, in just simple poverty, surely it would lift them over the poverty line, which is at $2 per day. So we would have $1.4 billion to lift the people out of extreme poverty and another $1.4 billion to lift the people who live in poverty over the poverty line. So in total, we would need $1.4 billion plus $1.4 billion times 365 days in a year, roughly around a thousand billion dollars, a trillion dollars. Now, now it wouldn't work like you give the people an additional dollar. It's not like you go there and say, here, you got a dollar, you're out of poverty. No, you, you would take this trillion dollars and invest it into education and into healthcare in developing countries. It would still show up at the accountant, accounting sheet and would show that these people on average, they receive the services equivalent to this amount of money, right? So, but you would need a trillion dollars. That's a lot of money. So let's have a look at some of the orders of magnitude of some other things that happen on the globe. For example, internationally, the foreign exchange market, the FX market, so that's the global financial market for trading currency, has an average annual turnover of two million billion dollars. So two million billion dollars per year are just traded to exchange currencies. So you change from dollar to euros or to yens or whatever, and that's the volume uh, that it has. Now, our trillion dollars, our $1,000 billion dollars, are 0 0.0005 of this 2 million billion dollar volume of the global FX market. So that's 0.05%, less than a tenth of 1%. That's the amount of money we would need in order to end poverty by tomorrow. There is a very famous proposal from a Nobel Prize winning economist from Tobin and James Tobin proposed that what nowadays is known as the Tobin tax. So he said the idea is very simple. At each exchange of a currency into another, 
a small tax would be levied, let's say 0.5% of the volume of the transaction. And he actually proposed that in order to dissuade speculators, because he said if you take half a percent, that's often the gain that speculators make, and speculators create these big bubbles on, on the exchange market. So he said, let's give a, zero, a half a percent tax to them. Now we would even need 10 times less than that, not 0.5%, but 0.05% just on what speculators trade on foreign exchange market. And if we would permanently collect that and invest it in global education, healthcare, we could end, could end poverty by tomorrow. And according to the Nobel Prize winning economist Tobin, it might have a positive effect because it would also demotivate speculators of doing risky speculations and creating uh, these bubbles. So nobody would surely get hurt if we would do that. So yes, just by this proposal, we could end poverty by tomorrow. The money is surely there. But there are many other different ways of how this $1 trillion that we would need to end poverty tomorrow could be raised. For example, there's always a lot of discussion about global inequality and the fact that the top 1% earns a million dollars of salary and the 99% actually has much less salary. So, so let's look at the global millionaires and billionaires and how, money, how much money do they have. So in 2013, there were globally 15 million millionaires excluding their homes. So they really, they earned a million dollars. I mean, not that you have a house that's worth a million dollars. So excluding their homes, you, you really have an income of a million dollars uh, per year. 15 million people worldwide uh, had that in 2013. Now, there have been 100,000 multimillionaires. That means that they have more than $30 million income and about a thousand multi-billionaires, people who have more than $2 billion of income per year. So, so let's say how much money that is. Let's stay conservative, very much conservative on the lower level. So we have 15 billion and then the 30 million, that's really the lower level. They're usually they're in more than 30 million, but okay, 30 million. These are the multi-millionaires that gives us 3,000 billion. And the multi-billionaires, so let's stay at the 2 billion. There are some people who have more than 2 billion, significantly more. But let's say, well, the 2 billion, the lower level, you have 2,000 billion dollars here. In total, this global families of real millionaires, they have more than 20,000 billion dollars of income per year. So our 1,000 billion dollars turn out to be about 5% of that. So simply mathematically, if you would say that everybody who has an income, a real income, not property, has an income of over a million dollars per year, if you would raise an additional 5% tax, just a 5% tax, and it's not too much, we would permanently have enough money to end poverty by tomorrow. Now. I want to be very clear. I'm not suggesting that that's what we should do. I'm not suggesting that we should raise a tax on foreign exchange. And I'm not suggesting that we should raise a tax on the global million. I'm just showing you two of many possible ways that enough money could easily be raised to end poverty tomorrow and nobody really would get hurt. Nobody would get hurt. If, if you earn a million dollars a year, you have a 5% additional tax, you would not really suffer and get hurt. Completely in contrary to the 2.8 billion people, the 40% on the world who do live in poverty with less than $2 a day, I mean, they are struggling. They do get hurt on a daily basis. So all I'm, all I'm showing you here is that if you have a basic understanding about the global orders of magnitude, it's very easy to bust these myths. And to show that actually the problem is not that it's impossible. It's simply there's no political will in order to go forward and to end poverty by tomorrow. Now, in order to bust these persistent global myths, we have to be very skeptical and trust the numbers that we have to learn and not our intuition or, or some kind of, of, of urban myth. And this can be really learned. And sometimes it's so difficult to learn that, that you cannot never be able to see it, even after you understand 
what it looks like. You cannot, the only, the only thing you can do is just reason and trust the numbers that you learn. For example, let's look at this example here. Um, do you think that the a, a square, the square with the A and the square with the B have the same color? Or do they have different colors? Now I can show you by moving this color down here that A and B actually do have the same color. They really do have the same color. I did it on my computer so they do exactly have the same color. But even after I convinced you of that, can you see that A and B has the same color? Can you really see it? Well, you might be never able to see it because our intuition is trained to say that something underneath a shadow is supposed to be darker. That's why we cannot see it and we can never see it. However, I can convince you and show you that, yes, they do have the same color. So what I'm trying to tell you, these global statistics, we really have to learn them. We have to be extremely skeptical with regard to them. And even if we cannot never intuitively see it, you know, we have to trust what we learn. That's why we do these kind of educational exercises, because our intuition alone would be helplessly lost.